Uh, I'm uh, Vishwanath Jakka, uh, product manager in the uh, Cisco data center team. Uh, part of the uh, uh, solutions team focusing on uh, management uh, offerings that we have, not just for UCS uh, and the Cisco network, uh, but also the broader full network portfolio and the data center portfolio that spans the, uh, uh, the stack that most of our customers like. So how many of you, know, I mean, I'm guessing that most of you know UCS, Yes, no, Cisco UCS, Cisco Intersight, maybe, maybe not. All right, okay, cool. All right, let me, I'll, I'll touch upon a couple of these things and then uh, the uh, I will be spending most of ta my time on a new feature we are offering. Uh, star, I mean, we announced it uh, just today. It will be available uh, shortly. So uh, it will be, uh, it's called Workload Optimizer, Intersight Workload Optimizer. So I'm talking, I will be talking about that, what it is, how is it uh, going to help our customers in terms of what they do, and then I go from there. All right. So going back to the comment earlier, it's Cisco is uh, and customers as well. They don't. Uh, it's not just about network. It's not just about a single component. At the end of the day, we want to make sure that our customers are getting the right digital experience that they need for the for the success of their business. So uh, it's, it's at the end of the day, how apps are running, how customers are uh, getting the experience of the business, and then all the work that happens in the back end in terms of uh, storage, network, compute, hypervisor, so on and so forth, to just to, so just to make sure that it's all uh, working seamlessly as well as it could, to uh, get the best exp digital experience for the uh, end customers. So uh, the key thing is that within a given application infrastructure, it's a complex uh, I mean, beast. There are multiple things in terms of uh, on-premises devices, uh, your public cloud, uh, the uh, edge, are you able to guess? Okay, uh, let me move this a little bit. Uh, yeah, move. And customers are also using various uh, infrastructure and architectures for uh, bare metal, virtual machines, uh, containerized and microservices architecture, and also there are a lot of uh, dependencies between the applications, the uh, individual uh, instances of the applications, the infrastructure that's running on top, uh, virtualized or bare metal, any of those. Uh, there are a lot of complexity involved in this, and we have to make sure that the customers are getting the best experience they can uh, get. So some of the things that we heard from our customers and from a number of uh, surveys is this. If your application, in many cases, application is the business. Uh, nowadays, uh, applications used to be something that was a nice to have. Nowadays, applications is the business. And if you don't have the right, uh, providing the right application experience for the customers, this is the impact you will have. I mean, uh, as you saw there, 100 millisecond delay in a workload uh, results in a 7% loss of customers. If, they, if many of these customers we uh, or users we surveyed uh, use, lose a lot of customers the, the moment they have a bad experience with their, with their uh, system. And when it happens, what we see is that the, it's always a finger pointing exercise when it comes to troubleshooting the issue. And when it, or, uh, when it comes to uh, fixing something going on or uh, addressing a degradation, the app team is only focused on the application view, the infrastructure team is looking at just the devices and the uh, containers and the VMs and uh, whatnot. So they're not talking to each other. And even if they're talking to each other, it's more about, uh, hey, it's not my problem, it's your problem. So we, uh, there is no single source of truth uh, while addressing a uh, error that the customers are looking at. So this is an ongoing issue that many of our customers are seeing, and we are trying to uh, offer solutions that could uh, reduce this uh, friction and ensure application uh, performance assurance uh, beyond scale. So one of the challenges with this problem is that trying to make this happen all together manually uh, uh, through human and manual intervention, it's not possible, it's not scalable. Uh, there are, there's no business out there that have the infinite amount of resources or the skill sets or the uh, time to address these things proactively as well as reactively. Uh, uh, at all. So it's something that we want to address it for our customers in a single place 
with most with the least amount of time that we need to that they can take to make it happen so one of the things here is that what we are trying to do, uh, offer is a full closed loop system where uh, users admins have a complete have complete visibility in their system uh, they can see what's happening at the application layer they are what's happening underneath in terms of the virtual or containers layer and the underlying physical hardware and the uh, infrastructure compute network storage and so on then take all the data various metrics identified for each of the end devices uh, analyze it using ai based uh, algorithms apply analytics and based on the analytics provide proactive as well as uh, reactive recommendations to either remediate the problem or eliminate the problem before it happens uh, when possible so based on it, this this uh, we want to provide a tool that can look at uh, things what's happening over a period of time and then uh, provide the recommendations so let me see here yeah so before i go to this specific workload optimizer itself let me just quickly go to cisco insight for a minute so i did, did many of you say or i think uh, one a couple of people mentioned that cisco insight is not uh, familiar so cisco insight is our cisco's uh, hosted solution uh, it could be saas or a on premises solution that's used for uh, managing so far managing various cisco ucs devices across various uh, locations it was all about endpoint management configuration monitoring and then uh, connected uh, support uh, easy uh, problem resolution so that was the focus of cisco intersight so far it was all of purely on uh, device management endpoint management so going forward we are offering ad adding a few more capabilities within the portfolio to enable them enable our customers for hybrid it uh, management so the three things that uh, that are new that will be new within intersight is workload optimization that's the workload optimizer uh, i mean uh, topic i'll be discussing uh, much more in detail then integrated app platform and a multi cloud container management uh, one of my colleagues will be joining later today or tomorrow uh, he'll be talking about uh, that one but i'll be focusing on the workload optimization pcm so as i was mentioning earlier the intersight until today the main two capabilities were focused on the in, in, infrastructure administrator as well as the operations team for the infrastructure going forward we are we will be enabling with this all these new capabilities we will be enabling customer uh, release management teams uh, devops teams cloud architects uh, then uh, the overall line of business owners to get, provide them full visibility to the system so that is where cisco workload optimizer comes into play all right yep so this is the uh, announcement we made today uh, dave in uh, during dave gekler's uh, keynote uh, liz antony talked about this and then we uh, also talked about it in uh, liz antony she talked about it in her innovation talk focusing on the data center so what is uh, intersight workload optimizer so so this is a new embedded tool within intersight that helps address some of the problems i talked about earlier in terms of a comprehensive end to end uh, problem resolution and problem avoidance if you will it's a it's an ongoing uh, workload optimization tool that helps in matching the supply of resources that you have to the demands of resources from the workloads that are running on top workloads could be uh, just as a simple uh, generic uh, virtual machines or uh, specific packaged applications or containerized or microservices architectures uh applications using those architectures and then a various sets of uh, databases uh, so on and so forth it takes the whole infrastructure all application uh, stack into account and provide recommendations for ongoing optimization as well as ongoing planning and placement capabilities so uh, i think i mentioned earlier that it is uh, it is built on ai assisted analytics it collects uh, metrics from all the endpoints a endpoint in this case could be pretty much anything your it could be your server physical server it could be your host it could be a hypervisor it could be your application uh, platform uh, performance management tool like app dynamics or others or your container management tools it could be any of those things 
So it talks to various targets. It uh, collects data through the APIs. There are no agents to use. It's all through APIs. And it provides ongoing real-time recommendations uh, for both, pro I mean, uh, some are proactive, some are reactive, depending on what's happening in the system, uh, to uh, provide the best performance possible to the end customer. Okay. So uh, Workload Optimizer has, uh, like, I was, uh, like I was mentioning earlier, it has a broad ecosystem, support for a broad ecosystem of products across a breadth of uh, things here. As you see here, it starts with the, uh, the uh, infrastructure layer, uh, diverse set of compute, network and storage devices. It could be on-premises uh, or cloud as well from uh, some of the public cloud uh, uh, vendors out there. And you can, it supports I mean, hybrid cloud management in terms of uh, private cloud. Hybrid cloud uh, could be your uh, OpenStack, it could be Rav, it could be any of those. And then it also supports uh, platform as a service or container management tools as well. And at the top, uh, at the, we have a support for a number of packaged applications. However, uh, op workload optimizer, the focus is not the application portfolio support. Uh, the focus is uh, on the workload overall optimization. We rely on uh, application performance management tools like AppDynamics that, ha that has uh, deeper visibility into the application layer, uh, all the uh, uh, gazillion uh, types of applications out there where you can have instrumented code get metrics and insights into, uh, into application, and then take it back and correlate with the underlying infrastructure. That's what Workload Optimizer does. The, our core goal with uh, Workload Optimizer, a oops, sorry. Question, so oh, sorry. you mentioned AppDynamics. Yes. Do you support any other APM tools right now? We do. Uh, uh, Dynatrace, Neuralink, uh, they are the couple of three, uh, three I know of, when we are working on constantly adding uh, more. Okay. Yes, I mean, this uh, a good point though. Uh, this slide is not uh, supposed to be an exhaustive list of all the supported devices, uh, just uh, showing a few. Uh, yeah, that's, that's what I wanted yeah. to clarify. Uh, thanks for a good, actually, good uh, clarification. Maybe, there. maybe an, an additional question. So, if you support multiple APM tools, yes. Um, what about the instrumentation of the applications themselves, um, especially when switching between these vendors? You know, yep. re instrumenting the whole application stack can be a pretty daunting task. It can be, that's so right, that's right. What's, what's the optimization InnerSight has there to, uh, to simplify that process? So in terms of, I mean, uh, migrating from one APM tool to the other, uh, I'm afraid, we, we, uh, is that the question? Yes. Yeah, I mean, InnerSight, Workload Optimizer, that, that specific, yeah, we don't have a, we don't have any, we, this is not about helping the customer journey on, I mean, using different tools. This one just consumes information from the various tools. So that one, probably the vendor, where, you, where, where your customer is going to, I'm pretty sure they will have the tools required to migrate from one to the other. But uh, InterSight in itself, we are, uh, yeah, that's not the focus of this uh, okay. offering. It's all about collecting data points from uh, insights from each of these tools and provide the recommendations for, uh, for the best, exa uh, best experience for the customers. Yeah. So you only give insights. It's not that I can do things with the insights that you give me from the inter-side perspective? Uh, good, good question. So uh, so I think I have a couple of slides, but I'll answer it anyway. So the product can run in uh, what we call in three three modes. One is the recommendation-only mode. It's, it's a crawl, walk, run approach. Uh, recommendation-only mode, it will list a number of recommendation. Go resize this VM, go uh, increase the storage, whatever it is. It, it's, it's a, it will provide a list of recommendations. Admins can go take a look at what's happening, uh, if they like the recommendation and then go take action when they like. The second, or second option is what we call as manual, or it, can, it is semi-automated, semi you can think of that way. For a, certain, for a particular set of uh, recommendations, it has the ability to go and take the action on its own. So the admin looks at the recommendation. If they agree with the recommendation, they can go say apply. And if you do that, it will go, uh, the tool will go and uh, do the action for you. The third option is once you are comfortable with it, once you uh, understand that the recommendations are in line with what you expect, you can turn on full automation mode. If I understand you correctly, this is AI ops. It is AI ops. Uh, all, yes, but al almost. Yeah, we are getting there. Then we have to build some more things to Let make it complete. This way, there are companies that do way less and call it AI ops. Okay, thank, thank you. Uh, that's, I take it as a compliment, but yes, we, yeah, I mean, that's, that's the space we are playing in. Absolutely. Absolutely. But, but you have also kind of limits that you can set, that you can say, okay, until this level, you can add more resources, 
but I don't want to end up tomorrow with an 1 million AWS uh, bill, yeah, Absolutely. so Absolutely. limits are Absolutely. configurable. Yeah? You, can, you can create, all, you can define a lot of policies. Absolutely. Okay. Policies based on uh, multiple things. I mean, if I'm asking, maybe I want, I will get everything, but if you're asking, I'll limit it to X, Y, Z, I'm, I'm just saying. But you but said you can do it on-premises as well, right? This is across the board. On-premises, public cloud, both. And you can define policies. You can define policies and rules uh, based on which it will uh, adjust the recommendations, or it will just say that, okay, based on your usage, you still need to grow, but you don't have the, uh, rec I mean, you don't have the permissions or the, mm. but but you have to do it. You have to do something. Otherwise, you have to suffer through the performance, uh, when performance hit. So we give the dev teams just some resources, not more. Exactly. The other you, you production. Can, you can absolutely, more. yeah, you right. can absolutely, uh, there are multiple knobs and uh, uh, visuals. So it's kind of a profile approach, yeah? This profile can assign until this limit. By, by default, there are, there is no, uh, it's, it's by default, it's, the assumption is, it's, there are no bounds. It will yeah. look at the resource, uh, the application performance, Based on that, it will provide start providing recommendations. Then you can start putting these uh, uh, boundaries to say, okay, don't do this, don't do that, or this is the limit you want to go. Okay. Or you can start with that. If, if you know what those boundaries are, you can define those uh, rules and policies right off the bat and then get the system going. So for the same reason, many of our customers, what they do, uh, many of the customers I mean, we have talked to, they start with, I mean, recommendation only mode because they want to see what what is the recommendation like you said i mean if it starts spinning up uh, uh, hundreds of uh, instances i mean uh, the cha the pra, the ticket will go up and it's possible because if you had, don't have the right setting right policy definition that could go uh, go so that's why you want to start with a recommendation only mode then you start going uh, going into a manual and automated mode that makes yeah. sense yeah yep absolutely so and uh, yeah, to his point yeah it's it's uh, spans both public as well as private cloud and the on-premises data centers as well. So, uh, so uh, like I was mentioning earlier, the key goal, the three goals for uh, for this with Intersight and with Workload Optimizer is to provide complete visibility of the whole stack, uh, going from the uh, individual components on the server, on the network device, on the storage device, going and building up uh, the uh, hypervisor layer, virtual layer, container layer, then the application and the application layer as well. So it provides complete visibility. The typical challenge that we hear from our customers is that they have different tools for each of these things, but there's no easy way for them to correlate uh, each of these things together and see the value in one place. That is the difference we bring to the table with, uh, with the workload optimizer. Yeah. And the second thing is the uh, insights, that's the recommendations that I was talking about. Based on the historical uh, I mean, uh, behavior of each of the applications, uh, it provides you insights on what are the what are some of the actions you could take to get the best value out of the system, and then uh, then the ac actions you can do automate it or you can uh, reduce it. Yep. So yeah, this this kind of spans across the board. And one thing to I think one of the uh, customers uh, I was talking to earlier, uh, one of the questions he had is, okay, for this to work, do you have to have all of this? Absolutely, not a requirement. The more you have, the better the recommendations will be because it's a data analytics platform. So the more data points you have, the better the results are. So, however, the minimum requirement is a, a your hypervisor layer or your public uh, cloud target. Once you have it, you start you will see the value of the product. But if you have all the uh, more components within the stack, the better the recommendations, better the value you'll get from the system. So. One of the things that I want to kind of uh, share with you uh, is how it works from a system level point of view. What does it do? What is it uh, uh, offering for the customers? So Intersight, uh, if uh, many of you, as many of you may be familiar, it's a uh, it's a hosted, currently uh, SaaS as well as on-premises offering. So it's a microservices-based architecture where uh, it's all compartmentalized and containerized. And the core existing capabilities, we are expanding that uh, Intersight architecture to uh, continue offering the existing capability, but add the optimization, capacity planning, and the workload placement capabilities within the same framework. And we are uh, also adding uh, orchestrator, uh, orchestration capabilities for automation. We offer some of it today. We will be offering it a lot more as we go along. And we'll have a library of uh, device uh, connectors to talk to the various devices across the board. 
uh, when I say wearable devices, I mean the, the storage devices, the network devices, uh, so on and so forth. All the API calls will be part of those uh, device connectors, and then it supports both on-premises as well as public cloud uh, engine. Uh, then it all interacts with the, the decision engine workload optimization uh, decision engine, uh, re uh, refers to the data that has been collected in the inside database and provides the recommendations. And if it's automatable, it works with the orchestrator and connect, it, uh, connect to the uh, connect to the end, end device and provide the recommendations. Uh, the uh, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, this is today Intersight is a SaaS based. It's running on the cloud, and you need to uh, provide access as a as a customer. You need to provide access to the your data center, all the devices within the data center. So if you have to connect to individual devices, then you have to be poking a number of holes in your firewall for each of the devices. That's a, that's not going to work. That's not a that's a non-starter for. Any of, pretty much any of our customers. So the way you do it is uh, what we have done is what we have introduced is uh, something called Intersight Assist. It is a virtual appliance that sits in your data center. It acts as a proxy. It is a proxy for communication to all the targets, all your uh, devices, all your uh, targets within the data center. The Intersight core engine that's running on the cloud that will talk to Intersight Assist and uh, through that, it will talk to all the endpoints. Could be UCS manager, could be uh, network Cisco network device, could be a storage device, uh, so on and so forth. It will talk to all those devices, collect the require, required data points, and uh, does the analysis through AI, AI ops and provides the recommendation back to the uh, back to the customer. So are you action. going to work together with those other? Um, devices that are in the network, so the storage devices, to name one. Yeah. Last week we were at NetApp, they were talking about ActiveIQ. Yep. Um, are you going to correlate that into insights as well? Because that would be uh, a great thing to have for a company. Right, right, right. So the the way we are, done, we are, we are doing this is by collecting the required metrics from the endpoint itself, mm -hmm. and we do the analysis ourselves. Mm -hmm. uh, I agree that ActiveIQ and other tools that are out there, point tools that can provide some recommendations for each of those. But what we have seen is that if you have all the correlated data with ActiveIQ and other tools, what happens is that they are focusing on one one component within the data center. That's exactly what I mean. Right. So, but right. they do it good because that's their focus. Right. They made those products. They are the ones that know exactly what needs to be done. Right. Right. Only it right. needs to be correlated to into everything that's going on in the in, right. in, in a environment instead of just focusing on the on the storage sorry yeah uh, f fair enough but the the focus of workload optimization is i mean it's making sure that the application performance is at the uh, optimal level and we'll take all these data points as inputs into that uh, into the uh, towards that objective the uh, the objective of this tool is not necessarily to make sure that your uh, storage device or the network device or a server for that matter it's running, it, there are no faults or events. That's not the uh, focus. The focus is that as long as my workload running on top is optimal, then whatever happens on the storage device, maybe there's something has change happening. But if it's not impacting my application, then I'm not going to do anything about it. How are you going to make sure that that's not happening then? Because uh, we, that's, we know. Where, that's where uh, it all right. comes together, right? I, I know, there's I know, always I know. something in the, in, in the whole of the right. environment. Right that is not working correctly, but by doing one thing, you can cascade everything that's- Absolutely, absolutely. So the, the, it, it recognizes all the things happening in the end point. But what I'm saying is that if that action, whatever action or event happens, as long as it's not impacting the application uh, application itself, mm -hmm. then I'm not going to do anything about it, is my, is my point. We will recognize everything that's happening in the system through the APIs. But what is your definition of not impacting? Uh, the application, I mean, uh, metrics from the application performance is the uh, the throughput, the uh, throughput, the bandwidth, all those things, are they doing good? Mm -hmm. Is my latency uh, appropriate? Is my application, is my, let's say, VM usage, is the vCPU or vMemory thing going up or the storage See, going down? Multiple locations where that, where a customer would say, my <coughs> application is performing not at all. Okay. And you call and you ask the storage administrator, and he says, "No, I see nothing." Right. Uh, go right. to the network administrator. No, there's nothing. Right. So that's why I asked, "What's your definition of my application is running 
okay. There's nothing going on in the in, in the environment that. So uh, the, the, yeah, the, we we do look at I mean a number of parameters. I mean some of the things I talked about. I mean response times, uh, latency, transaction timing, uh, the uh, uh, and uh, yeah user experience. So there are a number of metrics that we get get from the application. If it's if you have a APM tool, we get the uh, definitions from the APM tools. Mm -hmm. If not, we look at the uh, virtual machine behavior mm -hmm. itself. If the vCPU uh, memory, any of those things are spiking, then that means something is going on. Then based on that, we try to correlate what, to what's happening within that chain. I'll, I'll show you a couple of view of the topology view we have and see if that uh, uh, makes, a, makes, a, I mean, uh, makes a difference or not, then we can go from there. Okay, yep. but are you using the information from, for instance, distributed tracing in the APM tool to kind of correlate? That's correct, that's correct, that's correct. We, we, do, we do correlate data points from multiple things. Uh, at the APM level, all, the, all those uh, like response time and things like that, as well as the, any other analytics or the insight it has, we try to correlate that with the underlying infrastructure. And so in, in our side, uh, understands the correlation between different components in the application. Inside workload optimizer, yes. Okay. Yes, that's correct. It does. It does. Yep. So, just I mean, one a couple of uh, comments on the Insight Assist itself. So, like I was saying, it is a it is a uh, virtual appliance for uh, mediation for extending the uh, connectivity from Insight to all the devices. This the, the the ones the big boxes they are the ones that were uh, uh, supported so far. With uh, the with new uh, insight uh, assist and the new uh, workload optimizer capability, we are expanding that list to support pure. I mean, I we listed uh, I mean couple of those things there, but we we have support for we'll have support for 50 roughly 50 devices, 50 vendors, 50 uh, vendors uh, out there. So now with insight, you're able to talk to any device, any pretty much anywhere, irrespective of the location. Okay. I'll skip this device. This is a little bit more, few more words on the same uh, context there. Okay. All right. So let's now let's talk about the workload optimizer piece itself. So how does it work? What does it do? So this is kind of a console that you have in the system. So as you see here, the you, you see the topology map. That is all built automatically by uh, querying the various endpoints. You talk to the hypervisor, you talk to the storage device, you talk to uh, UCS manager in the case of UCS, and a hypervisor container uh, management tool, uh, any Kubernetes cluster you might have, then the application layer itself, and uh, AppD, Dynatrace, any of those. It, once you, uh, once uh, the tool is able to query talk to those guys, based on the various uh, identifiers, UID, uh, worldwide names, MAC addresses, so on and so forth, it's able to quickly uh, figure out the dependency and the relationship map. And it will create this topology view for you. It's not coming across that clearly in the projection here. And you also see some color coding for each of these things here, right? What it's showing is that it's showing the kind of the performance view of those endpoints. It's telling you that out of the uh, 400 or uh, 47 uh, storage endpoints, some of it you can uh, take some actions to make it more performant or reduce the cost or uh, bring it back into compliance. So it will provide a quick view there. Then it has a hybrid on-premises as well as cloud-specific view as well. If you have cloud-only assets, if you have on-premises-only assets, you can have a very filtered view. And it provides a quick view of all the pending actions that you could take to make to address the, uh, address the various things possible. The three main things that the product focuses on to uh, while create, uh, creating these recommendations, one is the first one is the performance, performance of the workload or the application. So it will try whatever it can do to get the perform best perf performance possible. The second thing is optimize the cost or reduce the cost if, when it can. Let's say many times what happens is that the, uh, uh, admins end up over provisioning resources. And then, or over a period of time, you, you probably started with the right uh, sizing, but over a period of time, the behavior changes. So then it will keep an eye on, on it on an ongoing basis and provide your recommendation. And the third thing is the compliance uh, requirements. To your point, if you have defined some policies and rules, if you have some requirements, it will make sure that somebody went in and go uh, by accident, make some changes, which breaks the defined rules. It will uh, uh, raise a recommendation, saying that you should go do it to address this issue. I have two questions to this. Sure. How granular is this regarding to 
measurements over time. So how often do you get these graphs? How right? How so, often can you update this? Right. By default, we do a uh, we do a polling every ten minutes. Ten minutes. Yeah, but you can customize it. And one question: How do you deal with peaks? Yeah. So I have a peak load, which Correct. is just there for a very Correct. short amount of time, Correct. and then disappears. Yeah. The, the, the very very good question. So this one takes seasonality into account. It's not just a point in time tool. It has a historical perspective. So it uh, looks at the behavior over a period of time. So based on that, let's say many uh, e-commerce uh, I mean, sites, they have a peak load, as you can imagine, uh, during the holiday season. Or even, even, I mean, even not I mean, holiday season, many of the customers, what they do is they run some applications during weekdays and run some others during weekends. So there is that difference in behavior during those uh, uh, periods. So it recognizes the various seasonality. So based on that, it provides your recommendation. So if it knows that for a given period, a peak is expected, it will provide you a recommendation. Let's say you don't have enough resources for that. It will give you a recommendation ahead of time, saying that, you know what, based on your historical usage, you are expected to, the usage is expected to grow. So go allocate some additional resources for that period of time. So if I can, like that. If we can interrupt you guys, uh, yeah. it looks long, more like a kind of capacity tool, right? It is not like a tool where you can act uh, you know, upon an alert, going back to your point with, where you, you say that you know, a drop of, uh, I don't know, a change of availability of a site, mm -hmm. milliseconds to second can lead to a drop. So if I'm a merchant, if I'm a, a business user with an uh, online application and 90% of my revenue depends on my online site, I right. cannot wait for weeks of, let's say, backlog to see that something is wrong in my environment. I, I need to address that, let's say, within the minutes. Oh, no, no, it, it is real time. So no. it, it, is, it is real it time? It is real time, okay. yeah. So I, I thought you said that this... Oh, no, no, this, this is for the uh, this peak behavior. Okay. That is for peak behavior. So okay. does it recognize peak behavior? That was the point. Okay. And, and uh, one of my colleagues here had a question before uh, related to that as well. Are you, as the uh, application manager, whatever, uh, able to, to, let's say, to define what are the, uh, let's say, acceptable thresholds uh, or response time and so on? That, that's right. You, by, by default, there are some uh, out-of-the-box uh, definitions. Okay. But based on uh, your uh, business behavior, you mm -hmm. can adjust those uh, definitions. Okay. That's yeah. Right. So some customers, they, they do not want to uh, see usage beyond, say, 50%, 60%. But some other customers are good with 80% usage. Okay. So all those kinds of uh, I mean, uh, I mean requirements will be there based on the businesses. So if you let it uh, run by default, it will look at the uh, utilization and uh, adjust the uh, okay. thresholds automatically but you can uh, define uh, anything but, that you require but, but right now i mean my uh, the, the, the initial question that wasn't that much about utilization of the environment but okay. it was more about uh, the uh, let's say the availability in terms of uh, accessibility of a website so we're talking here about uh, time to get access to a service response time i don't know if an right. http uh, absolutely uh, you know a website or whatever so Correct. is that something that you monitor as well? we do we do i mean we do so basically we do we don't i mean uh, workload optimizer itself it doesn't do it but it works with application performance management tool apm tools like app dynamics okay that uh, those apm tools uh, specialize on the, the, those things okay so we get data points from those apm tools mm -hmm. and then we correlate that to the underlying infrastructure okay so many times i mean your your response time is slow mm -hmm. it could be for various reasons it could be because the application stack the jvm stack or the heap itself there's something going on there of course in that case yes it's the apm tools will provide you recommendations but in other cases maybe something happened to his point maybe something happened on the storage or maybe something happened on the network device, but the but the symptom is on the application. Yes, layer. so you're able to re to correlate the issue or the the symptom, which is a, a drop of availability, Correct. or a, a, let's say uh, the site is lagging, and you can correlate that to uh, correlate cont to. contention on the storage, exactly uh, high CPU usage, high exactly. utilization, and then you're able to propose uh, active active recommendations. Yeah, okay. that's right. That's exactly the, that's exactly the point. Yeah, so it's it's yeah, it will look at. The whole when something happens, it will look at the whole stack. What is the impact of that action? If uh, there is something, then it will uh, quickly provide a recommendation to take action, okay. prevent you. So the, the the this tool is more about a, it's more of a, pre, a re, uh, proactive or a preventative tool than a reactive tool. The, like I said, I mean, uh, if you know the, for example, if a fan is failing on the server, let's say, so I know that at something somewhere down the line, it will have an impact on the workload running on top. So based on that, 
will uh, recommend a evacuation of the server and things like that. So it's more about keeping it the keeping the SLAs high than about <coughs> reactive. Of course, if something goes uh, goes bad, uh, I mean uh, unexpectedly, yes, it will recognize it. It will provide rec uh, recommendations as well. But it's more the value is more in the proactive capabilities of the product. That's what I hear a lot from from AOPS and from from other tools as well. So we do it proactive, but we have the opportunity to do it actively as well. Absolutely. So that's built in in this tool as well. Right. Is the what what is the meaning of that? Will you in the future say, okay, let's pick small things that we know we did a hundred times in the environment. It's a small thing. We can do it automatically. Right. Is that a thing that you can set? Let's put this on automatic and let's put other things on. You, you can define. Uh, yeah. Manual. You can define. Uh, yeah. You can. You can automation policies. You can define very granular. So, so say for example, let's say if uh, application, for example, if it's a web layer, right? Mm -hmm. You have multiple instances of those running. So for those things, it's uh, it's okay to automate those things. But for others, for example, let's say uh, you're looking at a storage array, and maybe it's uh, used uh, shared across multiple groups, you may not want to take action automatically. You may want to I mean, uh, evaluate what is the impact as a broader system. Because many times what happens is that it's possible that not everything within your data center is registered with the optimizer. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one, because that's yeah. what we talked about last week as well. Um, of course, you can say from a NetApp perspective that was uh, click here and the upgrade will happen. That's right. But what does that for the rest of the environment? Exactly, exactly. So that's why we provide the, uh, provide the ability to turn off uh, or turn on or off actions or mm -hmm. automation based on the endpoint or based on the uh, application type. For example, some critical customer, uh, sorry, production uh, applications, you do not want to uh, schedule any upgrades or any of those things during a peak period. But you want to do it only. You try to give as much insight into exactly. what will happen exactly. once you do the upgrade exactly. or exactly. once you do it, it, it will show the full map. It will show the full dependency map. When I, when I go to the demo, I can show you what are some of the views you get and you'll get, that will give you a sense of what's happening. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Then uh, quickly, right, so uh, in the view here in this console, you see a list of uh, pending actions and it's a summary of what, it is, what is this. Then you, you see here, right? This is the, this is a historical view. So you are, you are the one of the questions you had. What is this? So it, by default, set to a short window of view it will have, but you can go all the way back for one year to see what is the behavior. What is the behavior for one year? So that's how it knows about the seasonality of things, and it will, it will be able to proactively provide your recommendations. Do you know roughly for one year the data how much storage this is? Uh, we uh, so it won't uh, to, for. For 30 days, we store raw data. Okay. But after 30 days, we uh, take abstracted data. Ah, okay, got it. It's, and it's, it, I guess it's less less oh, granular. Yeah. Very, 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 very. I mean, uh, it's like I mean, maybe 100 gig. I mean, total something like that. Yeah. And of course, the the more devices you add, the more the requirements will go. But it's it's not uh, keeping. Uh, like I said, it uh, takes in many cases. In some cases, it takes I mean, pulls data every minute. So if you keep that raw data, it will really be big. But after, I think it's, that's once again, it's uh, customizable. I, by default, 30 days, it will take, keep the full raw data. But after 30 days, it will keep only the abstracted data. And there is somewhere kind of an advice how much storage you should have. Oh, absolutely. Oh, yeah. yeah. For how many devices. That's right, yeah. that's right. We have a calculator, I mean, a calculator, but yeah. That's, okay. that's right, that's right. Based on the number of endpoints, the high level view, it provides the data. Yep. All right. So, uh, so just to quickly mention what it is, right? So, with with Intersight, I mean, many of our customers are familiar with what's uh, what's being used, what's happening. We are using the same terminology uh, tooling to provide this optimizer capability running on top, and we use a common data sets. So what I mean by that is, let's say uh, the question I think somebody asked about: Is it only App Dynamics? Is it only some other devices, right? The thing with that is, or for storage, pure storage, or NetApp, or EMC, all of these do the same thing, but they have different uh, terminology or different metrics. But here, we normalize all that data into a common data set, and then we apply machine intelligence, uh, AI ops that he was mentioning earlier. We recommend I will apply the machine intelligence to provide all the recommendations to increase the performance. Right? So, I mean, 
at the end of the day, what we are trying to do is provide recommendations to our customers to maintain high, highest performance possible at the lowest, I mean, uh, lowest may not be the right term, right uh, thing, depending on the situation. Maybe you need to increase the cost because your application requires that. So I would say right cost or the optimized cost while maintaining the rules and application, basically being in compliance. So while taking, while taking those three uh, things into account, it's doing a constant analysis of all the various uh, data points coming in from all the endpoints. Based on that, it provides real-time decisions that customers can uh, evaluate and then take to get the to make it uh, make make it ideal. Yeah. So the uh, just a double clicking on uh, what we were uh, when, uh, mentioning talking about earlier in terms of the application view, right? So today, I mean, uh, it's a siloed approach. Like, uh, you have multiple tools that you like. We were uh, talking about with Intersight Optimizer with uh, Workload Optimizer, we are able to combine data and provide a single view of everything together. So with the integration we have with AppDynamics, we collect all the data and then provide it within context here. So as you see here, this is a single application insta instance uh, context. So in the previous view, you saw the everything together. In this view, you are seeing the view from a single application. You have the application here, virtual machine, then the underlying uh, infrastructure. So we collect all the uh, data points, the response time or the latency, whatever uh, you were mentioning earlier. It will all be pulled in from uh, uh, from uh, AppDynamics and pulled into Intersight, and then provide the recommendations. Uh, so Intersight it provides a it becomes it's a platform for us to build additional capabilities going on to I mean uh, going forward. The first stop is the workload optimizer piece. Then we are working it with uh, uh, AppDynamics. Then with this integration, we are, provide, uh, we are able to provide a, a comprehensive uh, view of things for our customers. So a couple of screenshots, but I'll, I'll jump to the uh, live um, system that I have, I can uh, share. So this is the de default, if you're familiar with Intersight, I mean uh, Intersight, these are the def this is a default view. Then within that, if you go to the workload optimization uh, uh, tab, you'll, get, you'll see the topology view that you were seeing earlier, but this is a uh, double click of one of the recommendations that it was uh, show it's showing. As you see here, it's saying that you should go scale that particular VM. I don't know if you can uh, read it well, but I can, so but it's a rec providing a recommendation for resizing a virtual machine. And it's also saying, what is that, what is that uh, recommendation? Uh, what is the increase or decrease you're doing? And what is the impact on the uh, uh, resource utilization? So with the workload optimizer, it's all about, I mean, we want to uh, simplify uh, the operations of the whole data center. And we provide uh, tools where the, what we call as mean time to innocence. Typically what happens is that, I mean, it's all about, it's not my problem, it's your problem. So with this singular view, everybody is looking at the same view, uh, then you're quickly able to quickly identify where the problem is and quickly uh, resolve the issue. And with tying it with uh, I mean, uh, app dynamics, we are able to provide that business intelligence and the full picture. So going back to Cisco's theme, between applications and infrastructure, there's a bridge. Uh, 